Okay, everyone, I'm Mudan Jung. We just moved over into the, uh, the setup shop. Um, we're just doing a little panoramic view here. Kind of break time, a lot of people out, but we're uh, coming back over. This is Keith, who runs our fingerboard division. There's Tim, who was just uh, showing you. We've taken the strings off of that one instrument there has been uh, to his side. There you go. Um, we've taken the strings off that instrument that had the, the rippling in the fingerboard. And this is what we go through on this side. We, if you'll notice, he's already taken the nut off of the instrument, uh, popped the nut off. And the reason he does that is so he can, he can now really get an assessment of, uh, of concavity and uh, any rippling and things of that nature. Any work that needs to be done, he can do it and get all the way to the end without having to worry about the uh, running into the nut. So at this point, usually it'll take a, a straight edge, right? Yeah, kind of size it up. First step, I'll come in and make two measurements for where my my two outside strings are gonna lay across the fingerboard. Mm -hmm. So first measurement is five mil six millimeters in from the outside corner. Mm -hmm. Next measurement is five millimeters for full size instrument. And then I will make two measurements from 90 degree angle from the table up to where the radius of the fingerboard meets mm -hmm. and I need to make those two measurements the same and they're one millimeter difference the E is higher so I'm gonna make a reference mark 19 millimeters so that these two will come out the same mm -hmm. okay I'm going to take my radius gauge, I'm going to lay it up there, make that mark so I know where my radius is going to have to fall to get these two measurements the same. Beautiful. <clears throat> I'm going to cover the instrument up so I don't scratch it up. A little protection. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is create the radius first mm -hmm. to, to change the uh, height so that they're both even back here. So I'm going to plane. Whoops. backwards, taking off that very edge down to that line. Mm -hmm. Checking the radius. So I'm only correcting the radius at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about the relief right. <clears throat> or any other issues. It's best to solve one issue at a time. Yep. Be nice to do it all at once, but let me zero in here. So if you can see the light through there, I'm going to continue with this process until I can't see any light through the radius gauge. You see that, Alex? Yeah, get this focused. There we go. Sure. Okay. So I'm going to continue until I won't see any more light. Okay. Taking down any high spots that I make a reference to as I check with my radius gauge. Mm -hmm.
Okay, I'm pretty getting there. Yeah, pretty darn close. The rest I can take out as I sand. Okay. So now I'm going to check my relief because that's changed the relief now. So I'm going to I check the relief in three different spots: the center and the, where the two strings fall on the outside. The rest of the relief will fall in place as I plane. Now, now I'm too low there. Down. If you can see that, I'm too low at this point. So I'm going right. to know that I have to create more relief there. Right. Now I always check my two, where my relief is on the two outside edges looking over the fingerboard. Mm -hmm. It's the best way to get a good, clear reading. It needs to be right where the string falls. So now I know where I stand. <coughs> I'm going to start in the center of the fingerboard about one inch or so uh, strokes with my planer. After each stroke, I'm going to continue making that stroke longer and longer and longer until I end up coming mm -hmm. off the end, both ends of my board. Mm -hmm. this, this will create the relief that I'm going to need. making each stroke one next to the other. Now I'm going to continue making the strokes longer each time. Same process, one right next to the other, working my way across the board and then back across the board. Mm -hmm. I need some more blade. 